In the video that I made last week, I did a problem where you had some blocks on a ramp, and we talked about the coefficient of kinetic friction, uh, static friction, sorry. Talked about the coefficient of static friction in determining how much tension there would be in the string connecting it to another block, and what the acceleration would be. Uh, that example had a lot of steps, and maybe it's a good idea to think about a simpler example first. Um, so let's try uh, some simple steps with coefficients for friction and static friction, and then you can go back to the one last week. Um, I called that video, I think, simple Atwood friction, because these devices where you have blocks on a ramp and a pulley are a modified version of what's called an Atwood's machine. Which is a kind of neat device that measures um, weight in a complicated way. Um, but they were kind of cool in understanding classical mechanics. So let's do two quick examples using friction. So suppose I have a 5.5 kilogram object, and it's sitting on a floor with a coefficient of static friction of 0.31. I want to know what is the minimal force that I need to push on this block horizontally to get it to start sliding. Well, this is exactly what static friction tells us. The formula here is my normal force times my coefficient of static friction. And since this block isn't falling through the floor or flying up in the ceiling, that normal force should equal my gravitational force. So that should be my normal force. And now I can do my static frictional force, which would be equal to or slightly less than the minimal amount I need to push to get this block going. So that would be 15 pi times 0 0.3 coefficient of static friction, because I'm just filling in this equation. And if I do that out, 55 point times 0.31, I get about 17 newtons. Um, now, I did my favorite thing of saying that little g on Earth is about 10 newtons per kilogram, when WebAssign would expect you to use 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So we can do that real fast to see how it would work if I were more careful. So my normal force would become 5.5 times 9.8, which is 53.9 newtons, and my static friction force would be 53.9 newtons times 0.31, which would be 16.7 newtons. So again, the, that went fast because it's fairly simple. The key is the minimal amount I need to push to get a block started, or the static friction, or is equal to the static friction. So I have to push just that hard um, to overcome static friction. If I push any less, then static friction will simply equal that force. This tells me the minimal amount I need to push. So this is actually the maximum that the static friction 